Welcome back to another episode of the Solar Raid Specialist series. If you want to know about the rules of this series, make sure to check the description for a link to the rules page. On the last progress video, I decided to pause grinding Zora because I was running dangerously low on supplies like prayer pots and high level food like manta rays. And the magic fang isn't important to get right away. Having the blowpipe was good enough for the time being. So I'm shifting my focus to work on other parts of phase one. So for quite a while, I will be spending a lot of time building up my combat stats through Slayer. So I can work on getting a Zamrakian Spear from the Zami boss. The Zami Spear can be turned into the Hosta, which will be my primary weapon for raids. And it will become super useful uh, outside of it as well when I'm grinding for better gear for raids in the future. Slayer is the best way to train combat stats as I can get a lot of resources. The main things that I want out of Slayer besides experience is going to be the GP and the herb seeds that you can get from some really good Slayer tasks like Gargoyles, Necrows, and Karas and whatnot. Also, I'm going to be doing a lot of medium and hard clues that I get from Slayer for a chance at the Ranger Boots. It's a phase 2 grind. But if I get medium clues, I might as well do it anyways. And the same for the hot clue rewards. I want to get some god d high like chaps or tops. Uh, that is Sarah, Sammy, or maybe Armadale because it's going to be really good for phase 2 in the near distant future. I will also be doing any shaman tasks that I get for the Dragon Warhammer along the way. Because the Slayer Cave for that is quite nice. So definitely do that while I can. And besides the combat related goals for phase 1, I'm going to be working on some skilling related goals for phase 1, which is going to be farming. So I'm going to be spending a lot of time working on farming, improving my farming efficiency as well through some quests and some diaries maybe. Because farming is really important, I need to be able to plant the seeds that I get from the Slayer task, so that way I can accumulate a lot of herbs. And the herbs are going to be used to train my herbler of course because I need some pretty high herbler and I also need to make a lot of potions for all the combat that I'll be doing in the future especially at raids. So let's check it out first hard clue in a long time. Oh ancient page wait no I already have the ancient book. Oh and there it is 83 defense as well. Oh right they do milestone notifications for every 25. 16? 25 total. Would be nice to get um a 1750 total so I can access that world that'd be good second hard clue I got this from um, Hellhound Tash here we go oh oh we're gonna play like why is this so much all right good thing it's not a freaking serapate though oh really oh no they're the same why all right let me see what my task is bro oh there it is the lizardman task one of the main reasons I thought it was a good idea to pause Zora is with the blowpipe, I should be able to do the shamans a lot better than trying to do it with something like a rune crossbow or like a crystal bow. I've seen people do shamans with those weapons and honestly compared to the blowpipe, it is like night and day. So definitely uh, worth investing in a blowpipe before doing shamans. So I just need to get 100% change in favor before I can kill the shamans. But luckily, it's actually a really quick thing to do. Because once you hit 40%, you can actually start tackling organized crime. Which means you kill the gangsters that spawn in uh, different parts of Zaya. But yeah, it's really easy. They give you insane amounts of approval rating every kill. So I'll probably get that done in less than an hour. So I'm healing the soldiers to get to 40% change in favor. There's a little trick that I found some time ago where basically once you heal all the soldiers, there will be some uh, waiting period where you have to wait till you can heal them again. Actually, you don't have to wait because you can hop to the next world and all those soldiers there will actually be healing. So just keep hopping back and forth and yeah, bring your graceful and some energy pods and you'll get to 40% in no time. So the gang activity is insanely fast for favor because look at this. I kill the gang leader and I get 10%. And killing all of its minions is like a few percent each as well. And you can also hop worlds as well because there's a good chance that there will be a few more gang members in uh, the same spot in different worlds. So I am ready to go now for the shamans. I got my armor which is resistant to the blob damage which is nice. 
But I'm going to the Slayer Shaman area, so that means it's task only. It's between Shazian and the Chambers of Xerix, so it's in the swamp, right? And uh, each spot, there's like five spots. Each spot got two shamans. So there's plenty of spots for everybody. So I like this. I definitely would uh, rather do this and, you know, go to the canyon because canyon is super crowded and probably going to get crashed all the time. So, yeah, this is a nice and chilled way to do it. Oh my god, a spirit seed, really? Oh, righteous fish, my first ever shaman task. It took like, with the blowpipe, honestly, it took like two hours. It's like 100 kills an hour, just blowpipe at my level mid darts. But there's really uh, one thing I want to check right now, and that is the loot. So let me just show you guys, look at this. 195 shamans, I made... 1.4 mil. I swear I got about 1 mil in ALK, so yeah. About 70% of the value is from raw GP, which is insane because it's really useful. I can use it for Kingdom, Magic Training, and a whole lot of other stuff that I actually need to spend money on. Believe it or not, you need a good amount of GP on an Iron Man account, especially when you're building up. And this is Bad Boys from the Shaman Tass. <gasps> Sammy Page 3. Oh shit, that's actually really good. Let's see here. Really? Got ourselves a miscellaneous level of 83 fishing right now. Just doing some uh, really AFK angler fishing right now. The food is just mainly for long-term PVM purposes, so they're always useful. So I realized that I have 500 plus mahogany planks that I've gotten from Zora, and I could definitely use them right now for some really fast construction XP. I mainly want to get at least 50 plus construction so I can uh, make some portals which I'll end up using a good amount for farming in the future and also for some general purpose traveling and also to make the hard stash so that I can do my hard clues a bit easier so I don't have to bring all the stuff all the time with me for remote clues. So there are tons of things that you can make in your house and I'm not actually sure what the lowest level stuff that I can start making with mahoganies. I'm just assuming the chair and I actually can't make the chair of a current construction level but with the crystal saw I actually can because it gives you an invisible 3 construction boost. So with that I will be able to actually start using it right away. Don't have to go out of my way. You can make about 30 things using the boost of the crystal saw. And then once the charges is out, it turns into a seed. But fortunately, you can just go back to the spot where you got in the first place uh, by the quest. And you can simply just recharge it again at no cost. Takes almost no time. And you get to use it again for another charges. And uh, luckily for me, I should be able to out-level the need for the boost. So this is only very temporary. Only have to recharge it maybe a few times max for this little grind here. I just did 49 construction with the crystal saw. I can actually make the mahogany tables. And that's nice because I use up a lot more planks per item that I make, so I'm getting a lot more experience per charge, which is cool. This is going to be my last level for now, 52 construction. I'm pretty much out of logs, so this is where I'm going to stop. But this is perfect because I actually realized that you can use a crystal saw outside of your house. So when I'm building hard stashes, as long as I bring my crystal saw with me, I can actually make it as early as level 52. So this is perfect. One of the big requirements for phase 1 is actually getting 7 day herb blur and on an Iron Man account you actually have to prepare the herbs as early as possible. But if I want to farm these efficiently, I want to unlock all the good herb spots and also want to be able to get to the herb spots as fast as possible. So I built this portal room to initially uh, get ready for all of that. So I am setting a pretty big skilling goal for this week and that is to get the requirements to complete making friends with my arm. Because by completing this quest, I will unlock one new disease free herb spot at the new place called Weiss or Waste or whatever. And also completing the quest allows me to get to the Trollheim herb patch quicker. Uh, that means I can actually put the Trollheim port on my house after completing the quest. So. I unlocked two really nice perks for farming my seeds with that quest, so I'm definitely going to get started right now. The biggest obstacle to tackle for this quest is going to be the 72 mining, so I'm going to be doing that through mother load. It's very standard, I need the ore from mother load, so there's definitely no better place to get the 72. And also 72 mining is needed to actually mine the materials to make 
the teleports to the Weiss Herb Patch, and also to build my house portal for the Trollheim teleport. Okay, time to get my revenge on this Jataz. Alright, 45 minutes, not bad. And that was also my 300 task, so I gained 375 Slayer points, which is a ton, so... Uh, I'm not gonna cash this cape in though, because... Uh, I'm gonna save one for the Inferno in the distant future, so... So, I told you guys that I'm trying to prepare for Zami so I can get a Zamrak and Spear, and I need to focus on a lot of stat building. But another thing I forgot to mention is that I could also do with some gear upgrade to do Zami a bit better. So, I don't actually have a Carol's Top. And I was thinking, man, maybe I should get a Carol's Top uh, before I, you know, head over to Zami because I'm going to be doing the Protect from Melee method and that means I'm going to be tanking a lot of magic hits from the boss and the minion. And if I'm going to be wearing a D-Hide, I'm going to be a significantly uh, less magic defense. The Carol's Top is 15 magic defense more than the D-Hide Top, so that's really sizable. So if the Zami grind ends up being a really long grind, you know, a Carol's Top would help a lot. So I'm going to give this a shot and see if I can get this Karos top before I start Zami. And uh, I'll also get some nice runes along the way. You know, Chaos runes, I can uh, sell them and stuff for some uh, Onyxes in the future, for jewelries, and also Death runes are really nice as well. So at the very least, I'll get some decent side items while looking for the Karos top. Calm down there, brother. Oh, the Torax Hammer. Why the Torax Hammer, man? Next chest, oh my god, a Torx body, dude. That's actually not bad. So there is a lot going on in this episode in terms of information. So I think I'm going to wrap up here. I don't want to like overwhelm people too much. So hopefully in the next four days, I'll release another episode and you guys will be ready for that. If you enjoyed the video, then definitely give the video a like as it would let me know that I did a good job in the video and it also helps to promote the video and the series to other people that might not have seen it. And also if you want to watch the live progress of the Solar Ray Specialist, you can do so on twitch.tv slash ricecup. I stream the progress of this account every day. So definitely uh, check out the Twitch if you have time. But anyways, many thanks for watching and see you guys later.